Hey guys, in this video, I would like to go over how we can use the direct synthesis method uh, to design a controller in which we are dealing with a second order process that has numerator dynamics. And so things are going to get a bit more complicated because now we have this uh, term in our numerator at minus 10s plus 1 to take into account as well as um, the possibility of oscillatory behavior uh, thanks to the second, de second degree of our denominator. And so uh, to start off with, we're going to approach this like we have before with direct synthesis in which we're going to look at our closed loop, sorry, our closed loop transfer function, which is here. And uh, we want to essentially uh, obtain some kind of desired uh, behavior. So the closed loop transfer function of this system drawn will have the form GCGP, product of the two transfer functions in between the output and the input divided by your characteristic equation 1 plus GCGP, um, the characteristic equation, uh, 1 plus the product of all your uh, transfer functions. And in this case, I will let this term be equal to alpha, which is some kind of our desired behavior um, for this system. So we're going to design our controller about alpha because we, we want to get alpha dynamics in our system. And so uh, the first thing to do is solve for GC as some function of alpha. And so to do that, uh, it is a bit straightforward, but I'll go through the algebra. So we'll have um, 1 plus GCGP over GCGP. Uh, is equal to 1 over alpha and uh, this can be simplified down to 1 over GCGP plus 1 is equal to 1 over alpha and uh, now if we subtract the 1 we would have um, alpha minus 1 over alpha is equal to uh, 1 over GCGP and continuing, we will have a mistake that I just realized, which is um, this numerator should actually be uh, 1 minus alpha over alpha. Uh, continuing, if we again flip uh, or invert both sides of our equation, we will have alpha over 1 minus alpha is equal to GCGP, dividing both sides by GP. we will find that ultimately GC is equal to 1 over GP times alpha over 1 minus alpha. And so um, this is kind of the starting point for all direct synthesis methods. Uh, but in this example, this is where things get interesting. So alpha uh, is our desired behavior, which is sometimes denoted y over ysp d. So the response of your output y to a change in your set point ysp desired. And in this case, uh, previously we would have wanted first order dynamics and no offset. Um, but in this example, because we have numerator dynamics inherent in our process, we will need to account for that in our alpha term, our desired response. So we're going to let the numerator of alpha be uh, equivalent to the numerator dynamics in our process transfer function minus 10 s plus 1. And in the denominator of alpha, because we need this to be a proper system, in other words, the degree of the denominator must be greater than the degree of the numerator, instead of lambda s plus 1 like we had before, we now need to square this quantity um, in our uh, function. And so um, doing that and plugging in these values, we can move on to the next step in designing our controller. And um, before I do that, I'd like to evaluate these terms. So 1 minus alpha is equal to 1 minus minus 10s plus 1 quantity divided by lambda s plus 1 quantity squared. This is equal to lambda s plus 1 quantity squared minus quantity minus 10 s plus 1 divided by lambda s plus 1 quantity squared. And 
if we continue to expand this equation, what we'll find is we'll have lambda squared s squared plus 2 lambda s plus 1 plus 10, sorry, plus 10 s minus 1. And that's almost off the page, but we got it. Um, these ones cancel, and um, we will can now write, so this was our uh, numerator, 1 minus alpha is equal to um, lambda squared s squared plus 2 lambda plus 10 quantity times s plus 0, sorry, and then we're going to divide this by lambda s plus 1 quantity squared. And so now if we plug um, this stuff into our uh, GC term here, uh, what we'll find, and I'm going to evaluate this alpha over 1 minus alpha term first, uh, because we know that alpha was minus 10s plus 1 divided by lambda s plus 1 quantity squared, and then we just evaluated what 1 minus alpha is, we're going to take the inverse of that, so we're going to have lambda s plus 1 squared in our numerator divided by lambda squared s squared plus quantity 2 lambda plus 10 times s. These terms will cancel nicely, and now we will uh, add in the 1 over gp, and because we knew gp from before, um, we're looking at the inverse of it, so we'll have minus 10 s plus 1, and then over uh, in the denominator, and then in the numerator we have 5 s plus 1 times 3 s plus 1, and um, continuing the whole, sorry, the whole point of this process was that we could cancel out this term and this term, and so now what we find is that the controller transfer function that we have just derived via the direct synthesis method has the form 5s plus 1 times 3s plus 1 divided by lambda squared s squared plus 2 lambda plus 10 quantity times s. And so the next thing we need to do is get this into the form of a PID controller. Um, and so to do that, it is just an algebra rearrangement, but what we do is we multiply on the top and the bottom by 1 over 2 lambda plus 10, and the same in the denominator, 1 over 2 lambda plus 10. And uh, when you do that, we, uh, after some more algebra, we will arrive at uh, a form where we will have 8 divided by 10 plus 2 lambda times a term uh, 15 s squared plus 8s plus 1 over 8s, and then uh, times finally uh, another term 1 over quantity lambda squared over 10 plus 2 lambda times s plus 1, and from this form uh, it resembles the PID controller, so we can tell exactly what our gain of our PID controller could, should be. Um, we can also see here uh, that tau i should be 8, and uh, you can, there's some more math involved, but tau d, the derivative time constant, will be equal to 15 over 8. And so um, this was a generic example, or not a generic, but an actually worked out numerical example. And um, just to clarify, so a generic um, PID controller will have the form KC, a controller gain, times tau i tau d s squared plus tau i s plus 1 divided by tau i s. And um, this is where uh, you can see the uh, individual parts of your controller. This is something worth memorizing if you're in a process control class um, so that you can rearrange the uh, determined controller when you do direct synthesis or IMC method um, to evaluate these parameters. And a final note here, uh, 
note that all tuning parameters are functions of lambda. And uh, this makes our job as a process control engineer uh, a lot easier because we can very easily determine what the gain, the integral, and the derivative time constant should be just by manipulating lambda. And so if you're writing MATLAB code, it's real straightforward. You just um, can increase or decrease the value, and you get all three tuning parameters at once, and you're guaranteed to have the uh, uh, the best system you can have at that given lambda value to optimize for performance or robustness. And so this wraps up uh, this video on the direct, direct direct synthesis method when we are working with a second degree um, process function uh, that has uh, numerator dynamics. I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.